Today I'm going to show you some useful techniques for creating colourful vector art with a 3D style. We'll be basing the design on the rad patterns of geometric shapes and squiggly lines from the 80s, known as Memphis patterns, but adding a modern twist with gradient overlays to give the artwork a nice vibrant appearance. To create your 80s style Memphis pattern, open Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. I'm using a generic A4 size document with pixel units. Since we're creating digital art, make sure you're using the RGB colour mode for the widest spectrum of colours and set raster effects to high so your drop shadows don't look pixelated. Select the rectangle tool and draw a shape that covers the artboard to act as a background. Clear out the default black stroke in the toolbar, then activate the fill swatch. Pick a deep blue from the colour panel by eye dropping the spectrum or altering the RGB values. To avoid accidentally selecting and moving this element, go to Object Lock and Selection. Change the fill colour to white again, then draw a small square on the artboard. Use the ellipse tool to draw a circle. We can make slightly more complex shapes by combining multiple elements. Draw a circle with a smaller circle inside it. Grab the selection tool and select both objects, then line them up centrally using the align panel. Switch to the pathfinder panel, then click the minus front button to punch out the smaller circle from the larger circle underneath to form a donut shape. Other simple shapes could be drawn with the pen tool, just randomly clicking three points forms a triangle. The original Memphis patterns also featured cool little zigzags, curvy lines and brush strokes. Draw a path with the line tool, then give it a white stroke. Go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Zigzag. Increase the ridges per segment to 7, then increase the stroke weight to fatten up the shape in proportion to the other elements. Go to Object and Expand Appearance, which permanently applies the zigzag effect, then Object and Expand, which outlines the stroke into a shape. You could continue this tutorial using 2D shapes, which is more true to the original 80s Memphis pattern style, but using 3D shapes really enhances the effect and gives it a modern twist. With each shape selected in turn, go to Effect, 3D and Extrude and Bevel. Randomly rotate the cube interface, then adjust the extrusion depth for this particular shape. Select the next shape and add the 3D effect. The Extrude and Bevel option is conveniently placed near the top of the menu. Rotate this shape in a different angle and set a larger or smaller extrusion amount. When it comes to the circle, extruding it forms a cylinder. Giving it quite a high extrusion amount looks good for this shape. Try and roughly match the extrusion depth for the square to the width of its sides to form a cube. Draw a selection around all the shapes and go to Object Expand Appearance to permanently apply the 3D effects. Right click and choose Ungroup a couple of times until the option is no longer available to break the shapes apart completely into individual pieces. Any shapes with rounded faces will be made up of several segments, which won't look good when a gradient is applied next. Select them and click the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel to merge them into one shape. Draw a selection around all the elements again, then go to Edit and Copy and Edit and Paste in front. Give these duplicate shapes a black to white gradient fill by choosing the swatch in the Swatches panel. Then bring up the Transparency panel and choose Overlay. Go to Object Lock and Selection to lock these gradient shapes for a moment to make it easier to access the shapes underneath. Draw a selection around all the pieces that form the cube, then give them a new fill colour. If you switch the colour palette mode to HSB for hue, saturation and brightness, it becomes a little easier to find some nice vibrant colours. Placing the hue slider in between two main colours in the spectrum can generate some really nice colour transitions as it interacts with the gradient overlays. Sometimes bringing down the saturation and brightness slightly also helps find some nice hues without them being blown out too much. Find a bright, vibrant colour for each shape. The more fluorescent, the better for that intense 80s vibe. Those gradient overlays enhance the colours even more by adding transitions from light to dark that give the shapes a shiny appearance. Go to Object and Unlock All to release those black and white shapes. In the process it will also unlock the background shape, 
So click on some empty space to deselect everything, then click just this rectangle and lock it again. Select every face of each shape in turn and use the gradient tool to adjust the black and white gradient in a different angle. If you have any shapes where the stacking order is wrong, where the gradient shape is overlapping a face that it shouldn't, select it, then use the shortcut of command and the left square bracket key for arrange and send backward. Press it repeatedly until it's put in the right place. Once the gradient angles have been randomised to give the shapes maximum shininess, draw a selection around each one to select the various shapes and faces, then make a group with the right click menu, or the command and G shortcut so they're easily selectable. Move everything off the main artboard, then drag the first shape over the blue background. Hold the Alt key and drag it again to make a copy. Resize this new shape while holding Shift to keep it in proportion, then rotate it to randomise its layout. Position two or three instances, each with a different orientation, then move on to the next shape. Place some of the objects slightly off the artboard so the pattern is evenly spread. I did originally try making use of the symbol sprayer to quickly place several instances of each shape, then randomise the size and orientation with the other symbol tools, but placing them manually gives you complete control over the layout. You could also process your layout into a seamless pattern with the help of the Object, Pattern and Make menu. The Pattern Maker interface makes it easy to repeat the objects on the opposite side. Once you've placed all your objects, select them all, then go to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. Configure the values to 50% Opacity, 30 pixel Offset and 5 pixel Blur. This shading is another modern touch that enhances the effect. The Turing pattern effects from my previous tutorial could be used to add some more details to the background. Download my ready-made set from Spoon Graphics by following the link in the description area below. In the Swatches panel, click the menu to open Swatch Library, then Other Library, and navigate to the Illustrator Swatches file in the download. Draw another rectangle to cover the artboard, then click one of the Turing patterns to apply it as a fill. To alter the size of the pattern, go to Object, Transform and Scale. Uncheck Transform Objects, leaving just Transform Patterns selected, which will scale the pattern within the container. Place this pattern underneath the other objects with the Arrange Centre Back command, then choose Bring Forward to place it above the blue background. Finally, to trim the edges, group everything first, then draw another rectangle to cover the artboard. Clear out the fill and hold shift and add the 3D objects to the selection. Right click and choose make clipping mask. The final result is a rad 80s style design inspired by the colourful shapes used in the Memphis patterns from the era. By incorporating 3D effects, gradients and drop shadows, the artwork is given a modern twist with brighter colours than 80s leotards. So if you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips or tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to subscribe to my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my other free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.